Hello and welcome back to the Squirrel Heat YouTube channel and welcome to week number three of the Premier League preview. Now the 12.30 kickoff is the Liverpool versus Tottenham game. I've done another bit, I've done a separate video to that as I do every week. If you'd like to check that out, it should be in the link below. Should be, say the link. Keep saying the link every week. It's in the description below. So check that one out if you want to see. It's a good like 10 minute video about the Tottenham and Liverpool game. Have a check on that one, drop a like on it, subscribe if you're new. So the first three o'clock kickoff that I'm going to be looking at here is the Chelsea versus Burnley game. And the Chelsea versus Burnley game throws up quite a good, I think it's going to be a good challenge for both Burnley and Chelsea. Now Chelsea, they haven't necessarily been blowing teams away, but they've been picking up consistent victories and some consistent performances as well. Winning 2-1 each time, I believe. They picked up one against West Ham and they picked one up last week as well. Diego Costa being one of their key men who is popping up late on in games and scoring vital goals. Burnley obviously picked up a victory against Liverpool last week. They tore us apart. Obviously, I think their key player that they're going to be looking at is you've got Sam Bokes, who scored against us, and Andre Gray scored against us as well. Andre Gray, if he gets up and running, holy shit, because he had a very good season in the Championship last season. And I just think it's going to be a pretty good game. It's going to be an unexpected game. I don't think Chelsea are going to blow Burnley away at all. I don't think Chelsea are going to run through them. I don't think they're in that gear just yet. However, they obviously have their key players coming into form like Eden Hazard. Batshuayi is looking pretty good and obviously Diego Costa. How do I think this game is going to go down? I think that this could end up being, it could be a Chelsea victory. I can see it being like a 2-0 victory or something like that. Solid defence at the back. However, I can also see Burnley getting maybe a draw, maybe even a win. They, they look like they could do it against bigger teams as well. But right now, I'm going for a 2-0 Chelsea victory. Next up, we've got Crystal Palace versus Bournemouth. And both teams are struggling. There's no doubt about it. They're, both teams are struggling at the moment and they both need to pick up wins. Bournemouth look like they're playing good football. They just do not have the penetration to get through teams at the moment. Crystal Palace, on the other hand, look like they'll be able to get Benteke on his first Premier League start for Crystal Palace since his move. He started in the cup game, or I think he played 45 minutes in the cup game uh, midweek. And I think he did okay. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I was watching our game, so I didn't actually get to see what their game was like. Um, but what could this be? This could present a lot of problems for Bournemouth. Obviously, they're gonna, now Crystal Palace and Alan Pardew is going to have the big target man he's always wanted. And that could present some problems for what looked like a pretty shaky defence, especially against Man United first game of the season. That defence looked a little bit disorganised and made a couple of mistakes that they really shouldn't have. This could be somewhere that Palace could actually take advantage of and go ahead with the victory. And I think that is what I'm going to predict. I'm not going to predict a massive score. I think that Crystal Palace will walk away with a 1-0 victory. Moving on to Everton versus Stoke. And this could be a pretty interesting one, right? Because I think midweek, if I read it right, I was watching the Liverpool game, we were doing pretty well, we won 5-0, and then I see a notification later saying that um, Stokes' Peter Crouch scores a hat-trick with an overhead kick in there, and I'm just like, Peter Crouch with a hat-trick? Like, what, how old, was he 37 or something like that? Give that man a chance in the Premier League. He will score goals no matter what. He will, he'll score goals. He scored goals everywhere he's ever been in the England team, in the Liverpool team. In the Stoke team, he will score goals. He gives you another option while some of your players are injured. Give him a shot. Give him a chance. Nobody can get near that head of his being six foot seven. So give him a chance. He scored a hat trick midweek. Surely he deserves a chance at least. Obviously, then you've got Everton, who look okay under under Ronald Koeman so far. They look up. You know, I can't say they look amazing or anything like that, but they do look okay. They look like they're going in the right direction. They've seemed to have sealed Romelu Lukaku staying which is unbelievable Ross Barkley seems to be loving life under Koeman as do some of the other players as well could only mean good things what do I think will happen in this game I think with both of the way but depending on how Stoke start if they come out with someone like Peter Crouch and fire those balls into the box they could certainly present some new challenges that Everton might not be expecting but vice versa Everton could really kick it into gear. When Everton kick it into gear with their players, they've got like Deo Lefeu. They'll have, um, obviously, they'll have Balassi on the wings as well now. They'll have uh, Lukaku coming into that game. Ross Barkley doing very well so far already. If they can come out winning, they could present a lot more problems for Stoke, which is why I'm going to go for a 2-2 draw. Next up, we've got Leicester versus Swansea, and both teams are going to be looking to get wins on this one. Swansea won their first game of the season, lost against Hull last, year, last week. In the first game of the season, Leicester lost against Hull and they drew against Arsenal the week after. Leicester, I'm not obviously going to be writing Leicester off for like the top six just yet. 
got to see how this one come how this one happens how this one goes down i should say Leicester will need to get one of those blistering performances and they are at home and they need to put one of these performances in that they put in last year because if they don't, they have a very, very big chance of sliding away pretty quickly from the leaders that are already running away with the title by the sounds of it in the in likes of Man United, Man City. Swansea, on the other hand, they have picked up a victory but they also are coming off a loss in uh, the Premier League. I think they won midweek as well but even so, they'll be wanting to get back to winning ways in the Premier League. How can they do it? Well, they've got new striker in Fernando Lorente, probably still bedding in a little bit, but he'll probably come good along with a couple of other players that they've got. On the other hand, Leicester, I think that Leicester at some point, they're going to click and they will click. I don't think they started very quick last season. They had a couple of games that they maybe drew, maybe a lot. I don't think they lost very early on, but they've already lost one game. I don't think, I think they will start firing pretty soon. This could be the game to do it. I actually think that this could be the game where you're going to see Jamie Vardy and Musa and Riyad Mahrez, all those types of guys, I think they are going to start to click at home with good home support. I think that this game is Leicester's to lose. And I think that Leicester will win this game. I think it will be 2-1. I'm going for a 2-1 victory for Leicester. Next up on my list here, we've got Southampton versus Sunderland. And Sunderland, I feel, so, feel a bit sorry for you, to be honest. But when your manager comes out after your second game in the Premier League and says, we're in a relegation battle here, guys. Not the thing that you want to be hearing a great deal of, and it's just not its not going to instill you with confidence. How is that going to instill your players with confidence as well? It's just, it beggars belief sometimes, like, why would you say something like that? Maybe give it a good, maybe five, eight games in and see where you are then. Not two games, come on. Show a little bit of respect for your fans, because your fans don't want to be turning up thinking, oh great, well, we're going to fucking lose today, aren't we? We, we might scrape a win, we might scrape a draw, but no... That's not the kind of feeling that you want to be putting out there, especially when you're going to be coming up against Southampton, who look like they're going to be kicking on a bit more, obviously, with their uh, manager, Puel. I've, I've, I'm told that he's called Puel. Okay, he's apparently a very, very demanding manager, which won't be any different for them after having Koeman, who is one of the most demand, demanding managers, I believe. Um, I don't see it going in the other way, as you've honest. I don't think... Sunderland could do it. Sunderland could very well come out and they could win. They've got Jermaine Defoe, good goal scorer, and they do have some good players when they connect. But for me, I think this is Southampton's all day long. I think it's going to be a 2-0 win for Southampton. Sunderland need to kick on big style. And then the final 3 o'clock kickoff I've got is Watford versus Arsenal. Arsenal, it's looking like today, they keep saying it's edging closer. Mustafi is going for his medical. This young lad, Lucas Perez from Deportivo, is coming for his medical. And they're finally, finally getting signings in. Now, I don't think this eradicates. If they get these signings over the line, they haven't yet. If they get these signings over the line, this doesn't eradicate all those feelings that people have about Arsene Wenger and how he doesn't spend money and everything like that. Yes, they'll have got some signings. However, they've missed out on two vital months of pre-season where they could have bedded these players in pretty quickly, like... I like how we did our business, how Liverpool did their business. We got our players in pretty quickly and had them trying to bed into the style so they've got more of a chance when the Premier League hits. Yes, we lost against Burnley, but we are not we haven't made it so that like we have in previous years, like when we brought like a Balotelli in and he's got no time to work with the squad, he's fucking shit anyway. But giving players a chance to actually have an impact on the squad. That's what they should be doing. And a big club like Arsenal, and they are a big club. They're not the biggest club, but they're a big club. They should know that by now. But anyway, they're not my club. I can't really comment too much. I probably already commented too much for some people. Coming up against Watford, Watford look like they are wanting to hit a bit of steam. They want to get onto they want to get onto that trail and starting to win some games. This for me, I think with the new, I think that Arsenal are going to have a bit of more instilled confidence because they're going to be getting some new signings, depending on who they start as well. Obviously, he's still a bit dodgy about those players that he's got come back from the Euros. I don't know why it was months ago. Fucking play the players that you've got, Bellend. Play those players, and he it would be a comfortable win for Arsenal. I don't know what the squad what the squad news will be for Arsenal, but I'm going to go for an Arsenal victory, first victory of the season. But only a 2-1 victory. And the 5.30 kickoff is the big one for Saturday. 5.30 kickoff, Hull, City, Mike Phelan at home to Manchester United. Can Hull do it again? Oh, 
I think it's going to be a step too far. Let's have a look at why. Because Manchester United have won both their games and pretty fucking comfortably. Like, so comfortably. Yes, they came up against Bournemouth and they came up against Southampton. Yes, they showed that if, they, if, if, if they're given a chance, they will concede goals. Obviously, they conceded against, uh, against Bournemouth. Maybe that was just, you know, first game of the season. They're going to get that get goal out of the way. I'm not entirely sure. However, Hull have this fight that is just... You cannot teach that fight. You can, you can nurture the fight in players, which I think out of everything that Mike Phelan's been able to do all summer, that will be what he's been trying to do. He hasn't had players to come in and bed into the team. He hasn't had finances. He hasn't had good news. He's having to rally players and get them behind his club so, so much. This is fight that they... that ah, You can't teach that type of fight. On the flip side, Manchester United have so much talent. They have talent everywhere, all over that pitch. And I don't like saying this. I really don't. I fucking hate having to do a preview for Manchester United every single fucking week saying how much talent they've got all over the pitch. Their defence is fucking solid. Left backs, right backs, pretty damn solid. Best goalkeeper in the world. One of the best midfielders in the world, if not the best midfielder in the world. One of the top strikers in the world. You know what I mean? I mean, it's not good stuff that I like saying, but it is good for them and they've needed it for fucking, for too long. For too long for them. How do I see this game going down? My heart says that it'll be a draw. But my head says that this will be a 3-1 victory for Manchester United. I just think that they will have a bit too much quality for Hull. And I think it will be a third win in a row. And I, I hate that. It's disgusting for me to say. It really is. But I have to be honest. And it will be a 3-1 victory for Manchester United. Moving on to Sunday. And we have West Bromwich Albion at half one facing Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough look like they're doing pretty good. West Brom always look like they're doing pretty good. And then they don't. You know what I mean? Like it's just, it's it's one of those. I think that Middlesbrough are gaining quite a bit of ground. Like they're getting a bit of traction, I should say, not a bit of ground. They're getting a bit more traction in this league, and they're doing pretty well. They're not doing too badly at all. Their two strikers, I think Stuani and obviously Negredo, contributing in the goals as well. I think I saw a stat of something like they had five shots on target in two games, but three goals. If if that's going to be your strike rate, that's pretty damn good. Like obviously they may need to shoot a little bit more and they'll have more opportunity at scoring more goals, obviously. However, that obviously just bodes very well for Middlesbrough. West Brom on the other hand have um Salomon Rondon and obviously Berahino. Don't know if Berahino is going to be starting. Obviously, I just, you know, you never know what's going on with Berahino when it gets to the end of the transfer window. If they play anything like they played in their first game, they could make very well make this very very difficult for Middlesbrough and vice versa as well. And I think at the end of the day, I think this is going to come down to a little bit more quality and I do think Middlesbrough will be able to penetrate that brick wall defense that Tony Pulis has and I think that this will be a 1-0 victory for Middlesbrough. And then the big one for Sunday night, the last game of the weekend before the international break, Manchester City at home to West Ham. Now, West Ham, unbelievable. Like, I can't... I watched their Europa League performance on Thursday night and I was actually shocked at how bad they were. And this isn't just me slagging off West Ham. I was genuinely shocked. I, ex I expected... They've got the Olympic Stadium. What an unbelievable stadium that they have. Something that is only comparable to Wembley. The absolute size and grandiose nature of that stadium is built for European football, whether it's Europa League or it's Champions League. And the players just did not look up for it whatsoever. They kicked it in about like 10, 20 minutes before the end, end of the game. And uh, obviously Astra... Not Vauxhall, the actual Romanian team that's 11th in their league. They just, as soon as they scored their goal, versus uh, a guy called Felipe Texera, who used to play in the Premier League or something like that, scored a, a great counter-attacking goal. Um, Defence was nowhere to be seen for West Ham. As soon as they did that, going to the second half, bang, wall. You're never going to get past him. You're never going to do anything against, against them. And West Ham really missed a trick there. They really did. They've... Yes, they're still going to be in the Premier League, and they can be competitive in the Premier League, but they've been knocked out by the same team twice in a year, twice in a row, two seasons in a row. Unbelievable. And this is going to be very, very difficult, because apparently, like the likes of Payet, they've got so many injuries as well. Unsure of whether they're going to get this Juve's um, Zaza, the, the dude who did the really stupid chicken run stutter penalty at the, at the Euros, is he's meant to be coming over as well. 
but probably not in time for this game, I don't imagine, but I could be wrong on that one. Manchester City, at home with Pep Guardiola, look like they haven't hit even second gear, never mind first fucking gear. I think, I'm so, un, I am sorry, West Ham. I have nothing against your club. I really don't. I have not, nothing against you. I just think that this is going to be the day you get steamrolled by Manchester City. I think Manchester Pep Guardiola's Manchester City is going to steamroll you, and I really don't have anything against you. But at the moment, you don't look at the races. When you get your players back, you'll most likely be doing like what you did last year, maybe better, but I think not in this game. I'm predicting a 3-0 victory for Manchester City. And that is the end of this week's Premier League preview. There is no Monday Night Football. That is it. Week 3 is now over and it will be into the international break. And I don't like the international break. I think it's fucking shit. Because Liverpool always end up on the bad injury side of it. But anyway, enough of that. I might do a preview for the international games. Probably not. It's only a friendly. I might review them after, after they've happened. But anyway, if you've enjoyed this video and you enjoy the videos that I am making, please drop a like on these videos. It does make so much of a difference and just it makes me feel good, guys. It really does. It makes a difference. Um, <laughs> subscribe if you're new around here. You'll make sure to get all the content that I make. I make at least four videos a week about the Premier League. The gaming videos are coming back. I'm doing some betas. I'm doing a closed beta for FIFA 17. Can't talk anything about it, actually. I didn't realise that there is actually a confidentiality clause in there. Can't do anything. Can't talk about it. So I'm sorry about that. Um, but I am doing that, doing that a lot. Playing through that game until Sunday night when it closes. And then I'll be back on doing my rest of the gaming videos. So please, for now, if you could like the video, that'd be awesome. Subscribe if you're new around here. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll catch you later.